Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and that's right, it's the return of the Desolator News Network. You thought Scarce was back, so I gave up? Which, I mean, I think I word for word said that, but you were wrong! Ha, huh, that's what you get for listening to such an unreliable source! Here at the Desolator News Network, we, even though it's just me, I'm gonna say we anyway, are about to present to you the biggest news story in the history of history. I mean, Kim Jong-un's shooting another missile over Japan, I don't live there. Oh, somebody took out Archduke Franz Ferdinand? <laughs> Am I in his will? No? Then it doesn't really affect me, does it? I mean, okay, it, it, like the whole world went to war. But this is even bigger. We've got some news coming out of the University of Vermont. The legendary heroes of humanity, Peter Dodds and Chris Danforth, have come up with a conclusion based on a study of Twitter. And let me just say, I've got some conclusions after being on Twitter for a while, especially about the company, but that isn't what this particular video is about. It has now been unequivocally, scientifically proven through massive amounts of data and statistical analysis that Mondays are, in fact, the worst. Uh, the team made some kind of artificially intelligent bot, basically, that had like positive and, and negative connotations to commonly used words. And then, you know, they gave them a score, then like they had an average number between one and nine. So basically, on Monday, it got a score of 5.96, and then if you look at, like, Saturday, it was, like, 6.045 or something like that. So that really is somewhat significant. So the most negative words, negative terms, and that sort of thing were used on Monday by far. I mean, even Tuesday was flirting with 6.02. Now, this pool of data that they used was 50 million tweets per day, which is about 10% of the entire site's traffic. Now, Twitter users don't represent, you know, the entire world's population, but I think that this is significant enough and representative enough to show that Mondays are, in fact, the worst. And it is a huge difference. I mean, if you saw the graph, which I'm not going to throw up probably for copyright reasons, you know, whatever. But, oh my gosh, was it a heck of a dip. I mean, it, it is very significantly obvious that Mondays are, in fact, the worst day of the week. Universally. So now you're probably thinking this, Des, I already knew this. Why did you have to tell me? Well, because now it's scientifically proven and you can quote the study when you cite your sources to say that Monday is the worst. Like seriously, you could now get a mug printed online that says Mondays are the worst and then in the bottom citation and then this study, the date, the people involved and you know, etc. Oh my gosh, I could totally see like a publisher or like a lawyer having that mug. In related awesome news, Sony just announced that they're going to release a product that's a, well, robot dog next month. Alright. I mean, I'm allergic to real dogs, so what do you guys think? Can I get my insurance company to let me have a robot dog as some kind of medical thing? Okay, even I'm not convincing myself. Okay, here's one for you. A feminist professor at University of, take a guess which state... Um, well, California, in case you're not from America. Her name is Sarah Giordano or something like that. I, I don't know. I don't care either. She says that all of science, just science in general, needs to be rewritten from, quote, an anti-science, anti-racist, feminist uh, standpoint. Well, I mean, feminists and liberals do like to reject facts and replace it with whatever they feel like, so I guess that makes sense. But um, honestly, every single penny of funding needs to be taken away from her and put into some kind of study about what feminism does to your brain and if it's considered a mental illness. I mean, if you thought maybe this is just, it's logical, it's interesting, like maybe she's wrong, but, you know, let's read her paper. Pretty much the whole first, or, or I should say second and third page, are about why the capital S for science and sciences is because of colonial this and that and racism and oh my god. Guys, stop using a capital S. It's racist. Sorry. And there go the ads on this video. Oh well. I would call for this lunatic to be fired, but it's California. I mean, they probably went out of their way to hire her. I just find it disgusting that public funds are going to pay this crazy lady's salary. That is just absolutely disgusting to me. I legitimately hope the rest of California burns down. I really do. Now, if you thought that California was the central hub for stupid people, um, got another story for you. British scientists have announced recently that they have determined unequivocally that our universe should not exist. It has to do with the properties of antimatter and how they're exactly precisely the same, or opposite, I should say, as regular matter, instead of being unbalanced, which would, you know, explain why there's not equal amounts of antimatter and matter, ma matter in the universe. So the second that the universe was formed, it should have been unformed. 
So let me translate this into English for you non sciencey people. Why, why, why we can't figure it out? Why I'm mad. Also, we've known this for decades. This is so not news. I can't believe that they're just like releasing press releases and stuff like this for like things that middle schoolers already learned in science class. It's all about funding. It's just about funding and grants. Uh, I'm not sure where this next story takes place, but I'll just say California because, well, let's be honest, it probably is. Uh, some guy named Tom Steyer, who's a multimillionaire, actually billionaire, uh, he just spent $10 million on ads to run on TV to try to impeach Trump. I don't know how commercial equals impeachment. And also, how does somebody make this much money and not know what the word impeach actually means, what the process is? actually is like what it actually means to me all he's proven by spending 10 million dollars on tv ads is really reinforced the fact that democrats aren't pretty good at managing their money well or other people's money or if you're the hillary clinton campaign money that you actually don't have in the first place now there's some kind of new med being tested called gdf 15 i assume that's a working title uh and they found well not found they probably made five really obese monkeys and <laughs> injected them with it and uh, it's some kind of really big, like, hunger-blocking, hunger-suppressant type of thing. And hey, the monkeys dropped a bunch of weight. Um, First of all, monkeys get more exercise than humans. I'm just going to throw that out there. I mean, I've been to the zoo. Even the fat monkeys be swinging around in the trees, all right? I mean, despite, like, an average loss of, like, 7 to 12% of their total body weight over a year, which is, you know, it sounds pretty good, I just don't think that it can compete with the currently most effective treatment, which is one giant dose of personal responsibility. I believe the tagline on that treatment is, um, hit the gym, fatty. It doesn't not work. Yeah, I know, double negative. The marketing team needs to work on that. And finally, it turns out that a whole bunch of California fast food places are switching to robots to uh, order. Well, touchscreens, not actual robots. I mean, why would I want to interact with a robot when I already know how to use, like, a cell phone and a tablet? You just click, 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 there's my food. Done. Like, why do I even have to speak? Just beep, 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 beep food. And of course, it's all because of the minimum wage thing, you know, in certain areas, oh, now it's $15 minimum wage. As it turns out, and this is this just shocked everybody, um, businesses can't just print money. Now, I personally thought they could. I thought they could just go in the back room and print out more money because every single small business owner is just a money hoarding, you know, Scrooge McDuck. As it turns out, if you have to pay your staff more, you have to make more. I had no idea that's how business worked. None whatsoever. But then again, there's probably some professors out in California that think that math is just a myth created by, you know, men. So, you know, there's that. So that's all the news for now, and hopefully you'll join me in hoping that a meteorite ends it all tomorrow. Human society just isn't worth it. I'll see you guys next video.